Hey guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guard. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, as you can tell by the title, okay, and this is not a clickbait title. Um, it's a question more that I'm putting towards you guys and I have some sort of uh, evidence and it's just things that I've gathered over the last few years to present to you guys and you let me know if you experience the same things, if you haven't or or what you think is causing it or whatever. But let me explain to you as best I can the reason why I am at the point where I think our Copic markers the worst markers on the market at the minute and I've done like loads of different things I've made this I've tried to make this video about four or five times I keep kind of like going off on talking about certain parts that are not really relevant to what I'm trying to say here but some of that information I will have over on the written review because I find it easier sometimes to lay things out in a written format and I think for when we're talking about different prices of different products and things like that, it's easier to see that in a visual representation rather than just listen to somebody rattle off uh, prices. So, as you can see here by the camera, right, I have a selection of markers. And if you follow me, if you've been following me for uh, any length of time, you will know that my preferred method of art is using markers and coloured pencils. I love the the speed that the markers give you because you're like covering a large area and then the the detail that the colored pencils give you and but in that ability to cover a large area with markers you also have a, a certain element of detail with the markers especially brush nib markers and that's specifically what we're going to be talking about here today um and the the ability that you have to you know create gradients and things like that so i've been using markers now since the very first company that ever reached out to me and sent me markers was the spectrum noir uh, and they sent me the illustrator and the graphic markers now back then they had just come out with them so i think this was about five years ago about five or six years ago just when I first started out on this channel. And at the time, Spectrum Noir, they had a lot of problems with the brush nib that they had. And they got into partnership with Jazza and then they changed the, the nibs. And the nibs that are in the uh, Illustrator marker now, the brush nibs that are in the Illustrator now, is a much, much better, much, much higher quality nib. And uh, performs beautifully. And so, what I am going to be saying to you here, throughout the course of this, and showing you different information, um, I have about four or five, or about six years experience using markers. And as you can see, this is only a small selection of the different markers that I have. Um, but I haven't put all of them out, because so much of them are quite similar. But as you can see here, I've got the... Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers. I've just got red, red, yellow, and blue of all of them. Um, the Windsor and Newton brush nib marker. Now they also have the Pro marker, which has got the the bullet nib. Uh, Art Art and Fly markers here, which are brush nib and chisel. Sketch marker. Now sketch marker is a little bit different, okay? Because sketch marker are in the process of trying to strike up a partnership with companies here in the UK. In order to sell these markers properly in the UK. I think you can get a couple of sets on Amazon uh, in the UK. But primarily Sketch Marker is a Ukrainian company. But they originally started selling the markers in Russia. Um, which they no longer do because of the things that are going on over there. But as a result of that. They're also like I say they've branched out in America. There's a store in America that they sell them from. And um, I think you can get them on Amazon US. But they're very much in their infancy whenever it comes down to being sold in Western Europe and America. But as far as the likes of Eastern Europe and Russia is concerned, they've had these markers for quite some time. Uh, Ardex markers, this is the Oros 
as well. This is the brush nib marker from Artex. Then we've got the Copic markers, which is the, the markers that I, I am specifically talking about here. We also have Ahuhu markers. Now, this is the uh, brush nib marker as well that they have. And the style file marker. Now, style file, I believe, are German uh, or that area, Austrian or something like that. I can't remember exactly where they're where the, the, their headquarters are but style file are another wonderful company i did a re review of them in fact all of these markers i've did re i've completed properly proper reviews of and uh, i'll have the links for those down below so you can go across and take a look at the actual individual reviews of those markers with the exception of the spectrum noir illustrator my review of that is my old review so you probably best not watch that one but um i'll have to get around to doing a new review of the the illustrator now i have some images coming up here and as you can see i have the full entire set of copic markers the vast majority of the markers are the the copic sketch there are a few child markers in there and when I first started out, Chao was the only markers I had. And as the Chao mark markers ran out, I replaced them. Rather than getting new ink, I replaced them with sketch markers. Because I, I wanted to, to have the complete Copic marker set. Uh, and I and I love the sketch markers. Now, I do have a review about the Copic markers in general. Because they have the sketch marker, the Chao marker. And they also have their original or sometimes referred to as classic. When it comes down to the sketch marker and the chow marker, there is no difference when it comes down to the nibs. The nibs are exactly the same. The three main differences in those markers are the, um, the barrel shape, the amount of ink that the, the, the sketch can t hold a little bit more ink than the chow can, and the fact that the lids on the Copic sketch have the color number and the color name printed on the lids as well. So when you have them laid down, you can see the the color names and numbers. Whereas with the Chow, you don't get that. There's nothing on the ends of the lids. But in terms of performance, the markers are identical. So I have, as you, as I've just said, I've reviewed loads and loads of markers. And this is what has me, led me to come up with this statement that I think the Copics are perhaps the worst markers on the market. Now, if we take a look, so all out of all the markers that are here, um, the the only ones that I'm having severe problems with are the Copic sketch markers but the copic sketch markers are too expensive to be having this type of problem with so again i'll show you some images here the images that i'm showing you here are um close-up images of the brush nibs and and the chisel nib as well on the sketch markers i have five so far five sketch markers that have gone like this. Now that may not sound like a lot. But that's £25. Depending on where you buy the sketch marker. Uh, £25 worth of marker. That I have had to completely replace. Because of the way these nibs are going. Now it's not just that the nib gets a little bit bobbly. Or anything like that. They completely, they completely dry out. I have tried getting ink when when this first happened uh, I got ink and I tried to top it up with the ink but it didn't work the way that the, whatever's happening with the nibs it's just it's stopping the flow now I could go out and get new nibs but the nibs are really expensive as well to get like a small bag of four nibs I think is about 10 or 15 pound depending on where you get them from so that's like three full copic sketch markers uh and you and you don't get that many nibs in the packet i think it's about four nibs maybe five nibs in the in the packet 
Um, I, I'm not exactly sure. I'll have the, the exact pricing over there. But nevertheless, if I wanted to do that, don't forget, I'm going to have to get a chisel nib and a, a, a brush nib because it's happening to both ends of the nibs here. So, and just to show you that this, you know, that what I'm telling you is the truth and that these markers don't work. So you can see here that I have in my hand the markers that I've just shown you on those images. So it is the um, Cotton Candy, the, the, the R39, YR27, uh, E34, and very, very recently it's the E49, which is a dark bark. Now, you can see here that I have in my hand the duplicate markers of those with the exception of E49 because I haven't got round to buying a new one of the, the E49. Um, but you can see here that the ones that are in my left hand are the ones that are new and working. The ones that are in my right hand here are the ones that are um, just no good, can't be used. And like I say, I've tried with one of them, just topping them up with ink. It just doesn't work. doesn't matter. Um, but, and even if I did go out and buy new nibs for the, the brush and the chisel nib, that's still a significant amount of money that I'm having to replace for no reason. So here comes, here comes the, the, the why is this happening. All of these markers that you can see here are all kept exactly the same way. They're all kept as you've seen in the photograph of my full set of Copics laying down, which is what, the way you're told to store markers so that one nib doesn't get more ink than the other, that you don't have spillages and all the rest of it, and that it, it, it lays out the ink uh, evenly. So they're all laid properly. Um, this has been happening to me when I had the markers in the house as well, because I... if. I'm sure people are going to say, well, is it the environment that the markers are in? Well, I did I did consider that, but this studio that I now have is completely insulated. There is heat in it during the day when I'm in it, and I'm in it every day. At night, um, it does get cold, obviously, but I've not been out here in a winter yet either. So when I I only I've only been in this studio a few months, so just before the summer. Uh, so I've not actually been out here in a really below zero winter just yet. And even if even for that, I've got provisions set in place. Like I've got polystyrene sheets that go behind and in front of the markers just to make sure that there's no frost or anything like that. Also as well, my, people might say about the lids, are you closing the lids pro properly? Up until recently, up until I noticed this, the... the this Copic collection was my pride and joy. And so believe me when I tell you, when I buy something and I invest a certain amount of money into it, I really look after it. I look after it really well. And none of the markers have ever been used by the kids or anything like that. So I always make sure that my my lids are put back on the markers. Even when I'm drawn, I never leave the marker just lying on the table until I've finished using it. Um, like you know, if if I if I'm interchanging between different markers, I will I I will put the lid back on the marker and then go and get a different marker and then come back. They're never left uh, exposed, just doing nothing without a lid on it. Now, also as well, so all of those different things that you might consider to be the factor as into the reason why these nibs are going like this, all of these other markers have been in the same environment. They're used exactly the same. They're, um, s some of them are used more frequently than others. But um, that's the same with the Copics. I don't use every single Copic marker uh, all the time. And um, because of reviews, I don't actually get to use my Copics as much as I want to. So they're all used about the same. The style file markers are the are the the style file and the 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 Windsor and Newton are markers that I've had probably the longest. And there's 120 style file brush nib markers in the entire set, which I have, and not one of them, not one of them has had a, a problem with the nib like this. 
And it's exactly the same with all of these markers. So then we come down to the fact that, right, so if if what I'm saying is right, if other people are experiencing this, and don't, don't let's not forget as well that, um, so if you, if you uh, take a look here, let me just get the, the other one out here. There was a little bit of controversy surrounding Copic not that long ago whenever they changed their um, their refills because there was there's a lot more ink in this refill than, than what there is in this one and comparatively price for price these ones here work out a little bit more expensive. These are the newer ones and the reason why Copic said that they brought these out was because um, The, the long funnel is supposed to uh, make it easier for filling up your markers, which may or may not be right. I don't really know because if you look at the, the funnel on this one, it's identical. It's just a little bit shorter, but it still does exactly the same thing that this one does. It goes into the barrel of the marker. You squirt your ink in and that's it. The length is immaterial. Because these ones have been working for such a long time. Now, in terms of space saving, yeah, th these ones are better, and they, you know, they they go into most marker desk configurations where you can put your markers into. Whereas the other ones are they they don't really ex unless you're getting the um, express it sets. So so there was that. So Copic have come out with this new thing which caused a lot of problems for a lot of art artists but given how much we spend on these markers should we be going through this should this be a factor you know should this be happening when it's not happening to any of the cheaper brands one of the things Copic always had over all the other markers was the fact that they had a big selection of colors they also had a lot of really really soft muted tones um, really really pale values in different colors whether you're talking about your blue greens your greens yellow greens yellow yellow reds reds red violets violets uh the grays that they have the um the earth tones that they have they've all got really really light values and then really dark values in all color families but these cheaper brands now are, are doing exactly the same thing. They're all coming out with their, you know, their pastel tone sets and their muted tone sets and all the rest of it. And they're and they're, mo a lot of them are either more than the Copic color f color chart or just slightly less than it. So, for example, if you wanted to buy the Copic sketch in in its entirety. There are 358 Copic Sketch colours in its entirety. If you wanted to buy the Chow, this is why I haven't compared uh, the Chow against these other markers. Because the Chow doesn't hold as much ink as all of these other markers. And the uh, the the colour chart for the Copic Chow isn't as much of as m most of these. So the Chow only have 180 colours. And the Copic Original only have 214 so if we look at the the spectrum noir illustrator r recent count they've got 216 total in the illustrator windsor and newton have 71 colors i always thought that they had more than that but when i went onto their website recently there it says 71 plus blender and that is for the brush nib uh the brush marker of the windsor and newton so i was surprised I don't know whether they've taken colours out or something like that. I was nearly convinced that they had more colours than that. Art and Fly, they have um, 88 colours in their total marker. And it's, uh, again, brush nib. Um, Sketch Marker have got 400 colours in their colour chart. But they're introducing another 48 colours at the back end of 2023. So they will, at the end of 2023, have uh, 448 colours total. Style file, they've got 120 in the brush line. Ohuhu are up to about, I think at Ohuhu have about 
260 or something like that. I think it is in and around that. But I know that they've, I know that Ahuhu have just introduced a couple of new sets. So it, it could be a little bit more than that. Uh, Ardex as well, they've got about um, 202 at the last count because Ardex are the same. They keep bringing out these new sets, uh, introducing a few new colours. I know Ardex have just brought out a, um, a new shape barrel marker as well. But all in all, that that's what always used to give Copic the edge over the other um, marker companies. When the, when these cheaper markers, and I include Arteza in that as well, when these cheaper marker companies first came out with their version of markers, they would only have like a set of uh, 48 or a set of uh, 72 or 60 or something like that. But they're all up in their game. They're all adding more colours. They're all adding much, much more muted tones as well, which is what always gave Copic the edge. But even... Even with the colour palette that Copic have, the, if their markers are going to be doing this, given how much we spend on these markers, is it worth it? Is it worth you know, getting these to have to replace them? Because you can't refill them. Some of these markers as well, you can, you can refill and some you can't. Uh, the, the, um, I'll have all that over on the written review. I don't want to go into that now. But like some you can, some you can't. But if we look at the, the cost. So say for the, the Copic Sketch Marker. In the UK it's about £6.25 depending on where you buy it. You can spend a little bit more than that. Uh, in the US about $6.53. And in Europe about $7.95 for a Copic Sketch that compared with like the Ohuhu markers, say if I know I know they don't always sell them open stock, you buy them in sets, but if you take a set and you divide it by the number of markers in there, it averages about a, a dollar twenty five per marker or uh a, about a pound ten per marker. Um and same for Europe. The Windsor and Newton markers are a little bit more expensive, but not as expensive as the the Copic. Uh, for a Windsor Newton marker, you're looking at about three dollar three dollars fifty in the UK, about three sixty, and in Europe about four dollars twenty. Uh, style file, you're looking at two dollars sixty in the US, two pound fifty in the UK, and about three fifteen in Europe. Uh, the Spectrum Noir Illustrator markers individually are about uh, three dollars ninety in the US, two pound forty in the UK. About three three dollars twenty nine in um, Europe. Now, Art and Fly as well. They're about two dollars fifty in the US, uh, two dollars fifty in Europe, and about two pound fifteen in the UK. Uh, the Art X ones are about a dollar a dollar five in the US, about a dollar ten in Europe, and about a dollar ten or one pound ten in the UK as well. I haven't got the prices for the sketch marker purely and simply because they're not really sold as of yet in the UK. Uh, I know that negotiations are ongoing at the minute with, with this because I'm part of those negotiations. So um, hopefully that will happen soon. But, it, but, but I know that an individual marker, which sketch markers sell individual markers, replacements, it's not going to be anywhere near as much as the, the, the Copics. Um, so what what do you guys think? I know there's a lot of information to take on board there. And I'm sure if you're not a marker artist, it's all just been nonsense to you. But if you are a marker artist, if you enjoy using markers. I know it's I know it's simple. You know, just don't buy Copics then. If you don't like them, just don't buy them. But if you're sat there and you already have the full collection and you've spent about four grand on markers over a very... A total of six or seven years. Um, you know, is it should should Copic? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm if this is just happening to me, then it must be something I'm doing. But I don't think it is. I think it's other other. It's happening to other marker artists as well. And if it is, 
why are Copic not coming out and making statements about this? Why are Copic not trying to rectify this or go to the people that are having this problem and say, right, listen, if your nibs go like this, considering I none of my other markers it's happening to, so it can't be environmental, um, why don't we replace the marker for you free of charge, providing you can send us the marker that is damaged and they can verify that it is just damaged through i don't know whatever 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 the process is that's happening with these markers um that copic could but but copic don't need to come out and say anything about anything because they are the leading brand in selling markers and there's no doubt about it when you have a set of Copics and you're using them, they are beautiful to use. But again, when I'm using like the Ohuhu or the Ardex or the brush sketch marker or style file or um, the Ar any of these other markers, if I'm using any of them, um, I can still get this the, the same effects. I still enjoy using them just as much as I enjoy using the Copic sketch markers. Um, with my favorite... My least favourite is the Windsor & Newton and it's only because the way their brush marker is, it's too flexible for me. Uh, but I know a lot of people love using them. But for me, the, 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 the brush nib in there is just a little bit too flexible. But it still works. They all still work. All all the colours that I have of the, the Windsor & Newton brush marker, they all still work. None of them have gone like this. So I, I don't know, guys. This isn't really... I know it's a bit of a up and down video but if you can come up with any solutions help me tell me have your copic markers gone like this um and i get all my copics from cult pens and i know that, that this is not something just specific to cult pens i know that because i i know how cult pens look after their products and what have you that you know it's got nothing to do with that um if anybody can tell me what they think is happening here, maybe I can prevent it from happening to the other ones. But given, bearing in mind what I've already said to you, I make sure that these lids are on tight. It's not environmental because this is. Um, I've only been out in this studio during the summer and the the autumn. I've never been out here below zero, but I've got plenty of things in place for that. Uh, and this studio was well insulated and also as well that this happened when I was in the house also so there was um there there is that uh and I just can't think of another thing and also as well I always use these markers on markers spe specific paper in other words Bristol smooth or Bristol vellum sometimes Bristol plate uh or like uh express a blending card so I never use it on uh, like watercolor paper or anything like that because I I know sometimes people can say that if you use a brush nib on a watercolor pad, it's it's pulling out the ink much much faster than what the, what these markers are designed for. It, it absor that paper absorbs the ink much much faster than uh, any of the other papers, and so sometimes. If you're using rough watercolor paper, it can damage the nib. But I've never did that. I've never used my markers on watercolor paper. It's always been Bristol smooth, Bristol vellum. Bristol vellum is probably the most, the roughest paper that I've ever used my markers on. Expressive blending card and the uh, Strathmore 500 series Bristol plate, which is even smoother than smooth. So, I don't know guys, what do you think? uh give leave your leave your comments down below let me know what you think of what i've just said here let me know what your experiences are with copic markers and you know if you if you think you know what's happening to these let me know and if there's a way of preventing it let me know that as well because i'll i'll definitely do that i'll do i don't want to keep replacing these markers my plan was when i set out, out with the copics i first of all bought a 72 set of copic child and i was it 72 or it was 48 i can't I, th I think it actually might have been 48 and i i loved i loved them absolutely loved them and then from that point on um i started buying individual copic sketch markers 
And when the chow markers ran out, I would rather than get like a, a refill and refill them, I would replace them with a, a, a Copic sketch marker. So I only have like about 15 or 20 Copic chow markers left, maybe a little bit more, to replace uh, with Copic sketch. But, um, and then the, the plan was once the Copic sketch would run out, then I would get a refill for it and just work like that. So that's that's my video. So it's not clickbait the title. I'm at the point where I'm thinking, yes, Copic markers are the worst markers on the market. When you take into consideration how much we pay for them, the damage that's being done to them here, without knowing what the damage, what's causing the damage or anything like that. Uh, and the damage is extensive because it's, it's not something that you can just refill the marker with and just crack on with it. Anyway, guys, that's uh, my video here on the Copic markers. Thank you so much for watching the video. Like I say, if you've got anything you'd like to say, leave in the comment section down below. Hopefully, we can get this resolved one way or the other. Uh, I hope you've all had a really good Halloween. And um, I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.